All right, I'd like to do a quick review of uh, Doug Benson and Graham Elwood's stand-up show here in Flagstaff, Arizona last week. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Doug Benson's podcast, Doug, Love Movie Doug Loves Movies, where uh, he plays the Leonard, Leonard Malton game every week. It's a, it's a real entertaining podcast. And uh, when I heard he was coming to town, I was real excited to go see him. I'm going to give the the show uh, two and a half stars on the Leonard Moulton scale. It, it was pretty good. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the disadvantages they had both with me personally and with the audience. Um, uh, both comedians mentioned that they fell in love with Flagstaff while they were here. They, they said it so many times and even uh, mentioned it on their podcast after the show that I kind of started to think maybe that's... Uh, we fell in love with this little town is, is code comedy code for I can't believe we were stuck in this little town where nobody knew us and tried to do a show. I mean, the audience was like uh, 200 people, which was a pretty decent crowd, pretty well filled the theater, but um, uh, there were only like maybe 30 of us tops that were holding uh, the name tags that are part of the Leonard Malton gang. And uh, Doug opened by uh, reading uh, tweets, he said. I like to read uh, Twitter notes uh, uh, from the city that I'm about to be in, about to show and at the beginning. and uh, But there weren't a lot of them. And he was like, well, how many people are on Twitter? And there were maybe a dozen people on Twitter. So um, and, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of stand-up comedy. And uh, a lot of stand-up comedians do podcasts to promote their shows. But when they got to Flagstaff, there just weren't that many uh, internet savvy people. I mean, uh, most of the audience was people in downtown Flagstaff to party on a Saturday night that were like, oh, there's a comedy show at the Orpheum, let's check that out. So that put the comedians, I think, at a little disadvantage. And uh, for me personally, I mean, the name of the tour is the Baked On Stage Tour, and I I just just quit sm smoking pot like four months ago, but I decided, well, it's called Baked On Stage, I'll meet him halfway, and uh, it was probably a mistake because I was way high for the show, and it, I mean, it took me like three days to get to feeling normal again afterwards, so, um, you know, there are personal factors there. Um, Graham Elwood said, uh, Graham, I, I want to say that he was kind of jokey, which may seem like a strange criticism of a stand-up comedian, but... Uh, he had this thing where if he wanted to uh, criticize someone or something, uh, he would just you know say the name and then do a funny voice and like a funny walk. He even uh, did it on the podcast uh, "Driving to Phoenix" that they posted after the show. He'd just be like, you know, Graham Elwood, oh Graham Elwood, <laughs> and I mean, I mean Graham, I I I like your uh, comedy film nerds podcast. It's pretty cool. And uh, I'm glad that you have the gig of driving Doug to a different shows and rental cars and stuff. But really, I mean, if that's what you got, you, know, you should have graduated from making your friends laugh in high school to making your co-workers laugh at the office. That, that, was, that was pretty weak. But uh, Doug's set was pretty good. Doug's set was pretty good. Um, both comedians mentioned that uh, a lot of their material is stuff that you can find on the, on their CDs or you know on their uh, their shows on Amazon or, or iTunes or stuff, which uh, I mean you kind of have to expect. Uh, uh, you know, I was just listening to Jackie Cation talk about she tries out mo new material in L.A. and and does her 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 act, you know when she goes on the road, and I, I, th I think you find that with a lot of comedians. So, uh, I'm going to give the show uh, two and a half stars and do a quick digression, because I, I think that uh, stand-up comedians and writers really have uh, tough jobs because uh, they need a lot of people to imagine they could do their jobs. I mean, a lot of people have you know, show business aspirations or secret fantasies or stuff. But really, uh, writers run into a lot of people that think that they could be writers too. And, and stand-up comedians run into a lot of people that think that they're freaking hilarious. And uh, 
it, it's a tough job. Both are tough jobs. And, uh, so, uh, and, and one reason that I could never be a stand-up comedian, even though I'm one of those idiots who imagines that they're funny, is that I, this reeling off you know, jokes is something I find very unfunny. Reciting the same material that I've recited before is not uh, a thing that I would enjoy at all. So, um, you know, kudos to them for pull, being able to pull that off. But uh, me, myself, uh, you know, it was Chevy Chase who told me years ago, well, he told a lot of people because he was on HBO at the time, that... Uh, Telling jokes is like one of the least funny things in the world. And, and, and I kind of agree with him. You know, I, I like to make up something new or share the stuff that amuses me that day with my friends. And, uh, and uh, yeah, what was it uh, Bill Hicks said? Yeah, I've been touring the country with this material, so let me troll through it one more fucking time. And, you know... Uh, they did a little bit of, of specific material, but honestly, I, I would rather uh, watch uh, the Doug host a, uh, a uh, Doug Loves Movies episode than um, sit through the, the material that he already knows by heart. I mean, Graham even made a comment about, oh, I, I got thrown off by this mountain air and did, one, did some of my jokes out of order. Oh, man. You know, uh, I just feel like spontaneity it should be a, a stronger part of the uh, stand-up experience, but maybe, maybe I'm just naive.